let's let's uh, I can get you in this. I can do this. I can. Or where were you when when you, I I could? But I did this myself, and that's right. that's the other thing. A lot of things that. I will get myself, if I'm in an agency, I'll say, look, I'm not paying residuals. That just doesn't make sense to me because when 20 years from now, I get a, a residual check for 20 cents and I have to give you 10, 15, whatever it is, 20% out of a 25 cent. It's just stupid. No, back in my day, I didn't give residuals. You get from whatever you got me on the picture and then I, let me live my life. And because I did the work, I'll do the residuals. Fine, done. But if I get the picture, oh, uh, oh, oh and you did nothing and you still want 15% or 20% because I got the picture. No, I'll make the deal myself. <laughs> you know, it's like, I agree. You're preaching to the choir. I say that all the time. Thank also, you. There's a lot of people that are even worse that will just say, Hey, give me your monthly salary and I'll be your agent or, you know, publicist oh. or whatever. And then you're like, I have just done 10 times more work than you. And it's like the third day of the month. And like, I'm paying you. Why? Exactly. Exactly. And now with internet, but you hear it all the time with the music industry, you hear these artists who put themselves out there and they become hits and they create their own careers, but you can do that now. So I'm sort of been doing that myself on the side. And that's how I got this project with some, my own footwork. Wow. What was, uh, you know, when we'll wrap up soon, what was VH1's confession of a teen idol like for you? Like, were you happy to be a part of that? I mean, it's a lot of the concepts we talked about here today. I, I love talking about fame and the business. Like, that's one of my favorite things. Like, did you like that experience or when it was all edited and put out, were you like, I'm not sure about how this turned out? I hated it. Well, there you go. There you go. Yeah, it didn't do anything for me. It did. And and the the... I love the guys. Uh, uh, I was talked into it. Um, and uh, it, for instance, for instance, they said, this would be really good for your career. It'll put you out there again. It'll give you this. It'll give you that. I went in with a, with a, a, a script in my head on how I was going to do it, start here and end here type of thing. And they were, the producers saying, no, 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 you can't do that. You have to just do this. No, this is how I'm going to do it. And then, and that was, I was going to avoid a lot of things because I didn't, anyway, there was a, a point where, for instance, that was a, a really great turning point that could have been for me, which I was building up to in my character that I developed for that show, as you, if you want to say it. I mean, it was a reality show, but I was doing something else. Anyway, and that was we had to do that acting lesson and we had to get in front. Now, I had missed a lot because I was at my sister's wedding. I came back and I had told the producers, this is the last thing I want to do. I don't want to get up there and have to do acting because I think it belittles you as an actor. You're a famous actor. But at the same time, um, it depends on how they edit the show and how they're going to make, make you look, right? You're in a reality show. You've signed off on all that. At this point in time, I said, and in my character thing, it was further anyway, that it was time for me to do this. And so I came in cold and they said, uh, you know, cause they knew I didn't want to, whatever the whole thing. Um, and I said, okay, I'll do it. And I don't know if you remember, I got up there cold reading in front of the, the casting directors and I did this audition. I got such praise from it that even the director in the booth came and said, man, you did that really well. And, and everybody really liked it on the show. They gave all of those accolades to somebody else. They cut it from mine and gave it to somebody else and completely cut mine out. And so I said, well, see, this is why I didn't want to do the show in the first place. You told me, you told me, you told me, here was my opportunity. Here's where I blew everybody away. I cold readed something right off the bat and everybody made a, it could have made a big difference for me why I did it. I took, because I, I knew I could do this and then you don't even put it on. You don't, even, and you give it to this person over here because this person is freaking crazy and needs it. Uh, I said, they have like the director saying that was brilliant and all this and made it seem like it was to someone else. Yeah. They, well, they put, they, they put all the accolades that 
from the casting directors and everybody on to yeah. Jeremy instead. So it was it was just stupid. It was just dumb. Yeah, no, I didn't like it at all. Good old reality TV, right? I love Scott Bayo. He's a great, great friend of mine. But I, the show itself was didn't work out. Now, as we wrap up, like, what is advice? This was my last question, and then you could whatever else you want to mention before we go. What what advice would you give your younger self? Nineteen eighty, first film, just starting out, looking back at your storied career and everything you've been through in the business and as a father and in life. Like, what advice would you give your younger self? Good question. Good question. Uh, I you know I just I I don't know I I'm I'm literally one of those people who it's just one day at a time and and roll with life. Don't take it so seriously because sometimes you. Uh, 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 in the old days, I would take it, the drinking days and everything. I guess the big problem was, is you don't understand. That was my big saying. You don't understand. Poor me, you don't understand. And and the problem was, is I didn't understand. And I think that uh, people, we all have to go through our, our growths. I mean, if we didn't go through our growths, how could we learn to be the people that we can evolve into but i think that's the big key is oh remaining teachable just remaining teachable just be able to grow into something that i never knew i could become as a father as a brother as a, a son this kind of a thing so i don't know i i mean if i could say anything to anybody today it would just be remain teachable don't don't because sometimes what happens is i would hit a wall and that was the end. It was done. It was, I can't believe it, blah, blah, blah. But the problem is you never know tomorrow and that phone's going to ring. I don't have a crystal ball. It's broken. It's in the shop, you know? And so I don't know, but it, the wall hits. But if I remain teachable and I remain open, I can say, okay, I hit the wall. What, what can I do to go over this wall or under this wall or around this wall instead of that's it. It's, it's, never going to happen it's it's over and that's where I, I i always don't like people who say well you failed well no i i tried it didn't work out the way that i wanted to sure and if you want to call it failure but i think failure is for the people who never try that is such good advice seeing you didn't think you had any advice that's really good advice it's true well, yeah, well it, it is true it is true. Don't take things so seriously. You can't wake up tomorrow. It just doesn't make sense. It's so yeah. true. Well, listen, you'll have to come back on when all these projects come to fruition. Oh, I'd you love to. Yeah. Anything. I thoroughly enjoy chatting with you and taking a trip down memory lane and you have a lot oh, going on now. Thank and you. I really appreciate your time. Oh, thank you for having me. It was great. I appreciate and, it. Anytime. Nice talking to you. You too, man. You take care. And thanks again. Take care. Bye. Happy New Year. <laughs> Go call your mom.